Now let's talk about two dimensions. Um, when we have these equations in two dimensions, uh, all of the dimensions are independent of one another, right? So if I have, uh, if I imagine an object and I draw it, say, in the x, y plane, and it has a position vector like that, call it, um, call that uh, r1, and it has another position vector like that, call that r2, and then it's moving between those two, um, then we're going to have a change in position that is going to be equal to the difference between those. But all of these um, accelerations, velocities, and positions operate independently in the different dimensions. So if I know what the equation is going to be for the x direction, and I know the acceleration in the x direction, then I can write down the same equation for y and for z. And the way we would do that is we could say that the initial, or sorry, the final r position is equal to the initial r position plus the initial vector times time of velocity uh, plus one half times the acceleration vector times time squared. Now these are all vectors, which means I actually have three equations if I'm in three dimensions, um, and I can write these down uh, for uh, one for each dimension. So I can have my x position, uh, x initial plus vx initial plus one half ax t squared, right? And then I can have my y position, y initial plus vy initial times t plus one half ay t squared, right? And I can then write down my z dimension as well if we have one. Okay, um, so this gives you uh, a way of discussing the motion in more than one dimension. One of the applications for this is uh, projectile motion or predicting where things are going to be when they're thrown through the air. Um, so I'm going to draw a picture of that. We have, now I'm going to draw a graph this time instead of versus time, I'm going to draw a y position versus x position. So this is basically a, um, a graph of the position of the ball through space, or the position of the object being thrown through space. If I start in an initial position and I throw the ball, throw the object with an initial velocity, call that vector v, then it's going to go like that, make some kind of arc, ignoring air resistance. Now in this case, um, with this particular projectile motion, um, we have our acceleration in the y dimension is just equal to minus g, like we had before, and our acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero, because we have no wind resistance, we have no other accelerations acting. So that means I can take these two equations and write them down in the special case of projectile motion. So I can take um, the uh, x final is going to be equal to my x initial plus vx initial t, uh, and then there's no acceleration, so that one's done. And then I can do my y final is equal to y initial plus vy initial t minus one half g t squared. And the different components of these velocities are going to just depend on what angle this is launched at. So if I launch this at um, an angle theta, then I can write that my x component initial is just going to be v times cosine of theta, and my y component is going to be v times the sine of theta. So that is the special case of when we have uh, objects throwing through the, being thrown through the air or uh, moving under some constant acceleration.